Do you realize that over three and a half million people come into this country every year with no education and no skills? They're a burden on hardworking American families and our healthcare system, and they don't even speak English. I'm talking about babies. <laughs> Think about that. They are cute, though. They, that's their redeeming quality. They are so cute. They are really cute until they're not. <laughs> and they're not, and they're not, and they are really not. <laughs> Today, I want to invite you to reimagine parenting. Parenting in four dimensions, which I call four-dimensional parenting. As human beings, we experience the world in four dimensions. The physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And I think many of the problems we face today as a society come from not taking into account all four dimensions. Things like childhood obesity, low test scores, teen suicide, and maybe even school shootings. So it's imperative that we reimagine parenting to reimagine our future. Each dimension has the building blocks and the processes. So we'll start with the physical dimension. That's the easiest to understand. Building blocks of the physical dimension, the foods we eat. You want a quality body? You need quality ingredients. You build your body every day from the food you take in. Processes, basically exercise, but there's also the release of hormones and some biorhythms bio that fall into it. Back to parenting. When does childcare begin? It begins with the body you built before getting pregnant. The healthier you are, the better chance you have of developing a healthy baby. So, eat well, exercise often to be healthy for yourself and your future baby. Once the baby's born, teach them to enjoy good food. He's having a blast. According to the CDC, one out of every three children is overweight one out of every five is actually obese. And that statistic has more than tripled in the past 50 years. Right. How many adults do you know that have a weight issue because their parents soothe them with comfort foods? We don't need to repeat those mistakes of the past. Here is a simple fix. If there are no donuts in the house, you can't eat them. Control your family's health at the grocery store. In the preschool years, teach your kids gross motor skills. Run, ride a bike, stand on one leg to develop balance, climb monkey bars, all the physical things. As they get a little bit older, move on to fine motor skills, coloring, drawing, writing, playing a musical instrument. Once they're in school, get them involved in sports. The school teams, very limited rosters, but organizations like the YMCA, year-round programs for everybody, and don't overlook the individual activities like gymnastics, dance, or my favorite, the martial arts. The mental dimension. We literally feed our brains with the thoughts we let in. So, if you watch Fox News, you develop one kind of brain. If you watch MSNBC, you develop another kind of brain. The processes are our mental habits. There's an old joke. Boy goes to confession. Forgive me, Father, for I've had impure thoughts. And the priest says, okay, but did you entertain them? And he says, well, no, Father, they entertained me. <laughs> you can't control the thoughts that pop up into your brain. The brain is basically plastic, but even the impure ones can pop up no matter your best efforts. But you can control the ones you focus on. If you focus on one kind of thought, you develop a mental habit and a way of thinking. You can intentionally focus on other thoughts and create a better habit and a better way of thinking. Infants basically learn how to control the body. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's my hand. All right. As they get toward one year old, they start to realize that words mean things. They listen, they understand, and they soon begin to speak. Toddlers start to connect cause and effect. So that's why a three-year-old is always saying, why? Why, why, why? Preschool years are the years of imagination. Tea parties, 
dolls, trucks, even imaginary friends. They soon grow out of that, and you can introduce logic with things like same or different, name three of a kind, three kinds of dogs. What comes first when we go to bed? What do we do first? What do we do second to train their minds? Once they get into school, you pretty much relegate the mental development to the professionals, but be available during homework time, not so much to give the answer, but to show them how to find the answer. The emotional dimension. The building blocks are the stimulus. The response is the process. So an emotion is basically a learned response to a stimulus. Infants pretty much are instinctual. Fight, flight, freeze, and fine. When they're fine, you're fine. When they're not, they'll let you know. And you have to figure out which cry says, feed me, hold me, wipe me, or just get me out of here. Toddlers have a whole range of new emotions that they don't know how to deal with. So we help them identify their feelings. We name it to tame it. Oh, you're feeling angry. That's what that feeling is. But notice I said you're feeling angry. You are angry is a label the child might take to heart. Your feeling angry is an emotion, not an identity. Once they can identify their emotions, we teach them to manage their emotions. What do you do when you're angry? Well, you count to 10. Why? First of all, it gives you a little bit of time. Second, it gets you out of the limbic reptilian brain where you want to bite somebody's head off and into the prefrontal cortex where you can give a more civilized response. In the school years, we need to make deposits into their emotional bank account with compliments and positive affirmations. According to the CDC, there's been a 57% increase in teen suicide. There she is. And that's only since 2009 partially due to social media, but it's clear evidence we're moving in the wrong direction in emotional education. It's natural for teens to want to compare themselves to others, but we have to instill upon them the idea of a fair comparison. Everybody has strong points, everybody has weak points. Social media is the highlight reel of somebody else's life. It only shows the great vacation they had doesn't show the fight they had with their little brother or the test they failed. So we need to impress upon our teens to focus on their own strong points while working to improve their weak points. We also want them to see the difference between what they want and what they really need, but especially the power of gratitude. Gratitude goes a long way in combating the loneliness and depression that leads to teen suicide. The spiritual dimension is the dimension of belief. Now, what if you don't believe in the spirit? That's your belief. You have that right. I say each dimension has different rules. Scientific method is cool in the mental dimension, but there are things science just can't explain. What's the explanation for love? So I say applying the rules of science to religion is just as faulty as applying the rules of religion to science. But even if you don't believe in the spirit, hopefully you believe in morality, and morality has the same processes. So let's start with the infants. They don't even respond to punishment and reward. So punishing an infant is not only useless to get what you want, it gives them the wrong message because they don't know why they're being punished. Toddlers only understand punishment and reward, so your explanations basically go over their head. So reach them on their own level. Once they get a little older, they can connect cause and effect. Now you can start explaining. What did you think would happen? How do you think that would make me feel if you did that? Around the age of seven, they start to value authority. So teachers, parents, coaches, religious leaders, they want to learn the rules. And some of them at seven years old become real sticklers for the rules. Around the age of 10, their membership in groups becomes important. So 
they develop a morality of cooperation. A little personal sacrifice is okay if it's for the good of the group. Some teens, not all, develop, move on to universal principles. Not even all adults are that way. Here's what it would look like. Let's say you're at the 7-Eleven and the clerk accidentally gives you an extra $10 change. Some people would keep it. Hopefully everybody here would agree that that's not moral. So if you give it back because you might get caught, you're dealing in punishment and reward. If you give it back because that's what you'd want somebody to do for you, now you're in a morality of cooperation. If you give it back simply because it's the right thing to do, you're dealing in universal principles. So we want our teens to develop an internal locus of control so that they look inside for their answers and not to their friends or become subject to peer pressure. All right, audience participation time now. Who in here considers himself an academic or a scholar? Hands, hands, nobody? Okay, TED Talk audience, I thought there'd be more. <laughs> Who considers himself to be an athlete? Not too many. How many consider yourself to be a people person? Uh, a few more of those, that's good. And how many consider yourself to be spiritual? Ooh, pretty good crowd. Now, the big question, how many raised your hand all four times? Yeah. Why so few? Why can't you be an academic? Who takes care of your body? Eat a little better, do some form of exercise? Why can't you put a little focus on your relationships like you do on your studies? Why can't you feed your soul like you feed your body? More importantly, why can't you join me in raising four-dimensional children? Let's not repeat the mistakes of the past. Let's bring our children forward so that we can stop teen suicide. We can take a little personal responsibility for school shootings by raising children who are more emotionally mature and morally responsible. It's time we reimagine parenting to include all four dimensions. And I challenge you, I urge you, I beg you to start today. Research four-dimensional parenting and start raising four-dimensional children for a brighter future for us all. Thank you for your attention.